I am Dr. John Smithers, and I am the author of this book, Scumbag Sewer Rights, an archetypal understanding of criminalized drug addicts. This book is a perspective from depth psychology. That's D-E-P-T-H. Depth psychology, in a nutshell, is the psychology of the unconscious. Uh, in Carl Jung's theory of the collective unconscious, there is a repository of archetypes. This repository of archetypes, for example, are like the good mother, the epitome of motherhood. We, we're familiar with people like that. And we all know the bad mother. She's an archetype too. We're all familiar with her. And then there's the anima and the animus. Uh, Carl Jung's description of those is the feminine side of uh, men is the anima, and the animus is the masculine side of women. The entrepreneur uh, is an archetype, and so is the shadow, which is the dark side of humanity. We all have a dark side. These archetypes are universal. Uh, they are behavioral patterns that have existence have, it, uh, have existed since the dawn of humanity. And they're in all cultures, even primitive cultures. You could think of the archetypes as a gene pool of behavioral patterns. In Scumbag Sewer Rats, however, I focus on two archetypes. And, uh, well, let me go into the, the, the first one is the Puer Eternus, which is Latin for eternal boy. Also thought of as the Peter Pan Syndrome. Uh, Craig Nakin, in the Addictive Personality, describes a drug addict. He says that adolescents usually live for the moment. Practicing addicts also live for the present moment using emotional logic. Emotionally, addicts act like adolescents and are often described as uh, adolescent in behavior and attitude. After all, a lot of the issues that face adolescents are the same issues that face uh, addicts. The difference is, addicts stay trapped in an adolescent stage as long as their addiction is in progress. Like I said, he was he was talking about addicts. But that's a pretty good definition of the Puer Eternus. I went to a party when I was 11 and didn't get back till I was 45. I'm a classic example. And uh, I'm not alone. <laughs> I've got a lot of other uh, people just like me out there. Uh, A little later on in the addictive process, the trickster starts to emerge. You know him. <laughs> He's that dope fiend that'll steal your dope and then help you look for it. I know I heard a joke uh, on this very topic, and it fits so well this scenario. I'll, I'll, well, let me give it to you this way. Me and my friends, let's say, are over at Jim's house, my friend Jim's house playing cards. And uh, we're sitting around the card table, what have you, and I drop one of my cards on the floor. So I've been down to pick it up. The reason I've been down to pick it up is because I know Jim's wife is sitting right across from me with a short dress on. I pick up the card and I come up and I resume playing cards like the only reason I went down there was to pick up a card. Oh, 30 minutes later or so, I'm in the other room snorting a line or mixing a drink or whatever. 
And Jim's wife comes in there and says, Hey, did you see something under that table that you liked? I said, Yeah. She says, Well, why don't you come over here at 12 noon tomorrow and bring $500 with you and you can have it. I said, Okay. So the next day I show up at 12 noon. I give her $500. And we go do our thing. And then I'm out the door. About 6 o'clock, Jim comes home from work. And he says, Hi, honey, I'm home. And uh, she walks out, and on her way out to greet him, he says, Hey, did John stop by here today? Yeah, yeah, he did. And then she turns around and walks back in the kitchen for something. <laughs> he says, well, Did he leave some money? Uh, yeah, honey, it, it, it's in the cookie jar. Oh, good. He stopped by the office today and borrowed $500 and said he'd drop by here this afternoon and leave it with you. <laughs> Isn't that a dope thing for you? <laughs> the first part of this book is the developmental process of what they go through what addicts go through, you know, in the initial stages, the middle stages, the later stages. And that in that development uh, is the emergence of the puer and the trickster. And I've combined that developmental process. Other parts of the book, and that's about the first half of it. The second half, I talk about uh, the jointsters as authors. Now, I've coined the word jointsters for this book to eliminate having to type out criminalized drug addicts every time I wanted to refer to that. And a, a lot of them have written uh, books, articles, what have you. And I also, I did a research study for my dissertation. And I interviewed addicts. Some of them were friends of mine. Some of them, uh, most of them were from 12-step programs, AA, NA. And uh, in, in that, we get uh, an idea of their perception of themselves and uh, what they think other people think of them. Also, I did an, uh, another research study on spiritual experience. The reason I did that is because uh, an alcoholic came to Carl Jung way back when, and he he failed twice. Finally, Jung said, "I can't help you. You're hopeless. There's only one hope for you, and you you need to have a significant spiritual experience." before any intrinsic and lasting change can happen. Well, that's been a cornerstone in the recovery area, arena, for a long time. Spiritual experience. Well, I didn't too, too much understand that, so I thought I'd do a research study on it where I can get a better grip, of, because you can't really just define it. Well, I, find that, I found out why. Because there's a range of... Uh, experiences from the very subtle to almost the burning bush. Uh, I also have a chapter on addiction, the disease concept, and uh, recovery in general. And in fact, I outline a recovery program that combines the ancient art of alchemy with the 12 steps, except I, they're not the 12 steps. I've just borrowed from the 12 steps. I use different term, terminology. That is a synopsis of scumbag sewer rats. Uh, if anyone would like to purchase this book, it has to be purchased online, or you can go to a bookseller and uh, order it. They won't have them in the stores. If anyone wants a signed copy, buy the book and send it to me. 
uh, you can send me an email through my website. I have a website at www.scumbagsewerrats.com. At the bottom, you can send me at the bottom of any page. You can send me an email. That's about it. Thank you for watching.